come down here and sit at the old depot. Even though the train doesn't stop here anymore, it reminds me that the railroad is what really got Carlsbad going in the 1880s. Folks used to come down here because of the water. The place was known as Fraser's Station after old John Fraser. John bought up most of the land around here. Trouble was, he didn't have water. So he sank a well, and down around 400 feet, he hit mineral water and an artesian spring that provided for all his needs. That water had such a refreshing taste that Mr. Fraser began passing out cups of it to passengers on the train that stopped here. Word got around that his mineral water could work miracles. And before you know it, people started coming down here just to drink it. It wasn't long before news of this water reached a retired Midwestern lumber merchant, Mr. Gerhard Schutte. He came out here with the idea of founding a town of fine homes and small farms. Well, he and his partner ended up buying all of Fraser's land, and they turned it into what they called the South Coast Land and Mineral Water Company. Shooty had the water tested, and he found that it was identical to water of the famous spa Carlsbad over there in uh, Bohemia. So that's where we got the name for our town, with the K changed to a C, just to be a bit more American, I suppose. Mr. Shooty even put up a fancy hotel right next to the well. But it burned down in 1896. You know, during its heyday, that hotel featured mineral baths, 35-cent breakfast, and the best room in the house for only $7. I sure miss all that now. Well, that's how the town got started back in the 80s. By the turn of the century, Mr. Schutte was still living in his fine old home, but there were fewer than 300 residents in the area. Folks living here were mostly farmers, along with a few tradespeople who worked up in Oceanside. They got by with winter vegetables or kept a cow, or just planted enough for their families to eat. Uh, children who lived here from the turn of the century on up into the 20s went to school in a rundown building over on Pine Avenue. Something else we did in those days was read the spirit of love. That was our town newspaper published every month by Mr. Borden. Borden was also a pastor up in Oceanside. <laughs> well, there was a lot of sermonizing in that paper, but we also got weather reports and farm news. Some of the homes folks lived in back in the early years are still around today. When I walk by one, it sure brings back memories. Shooty's home was converted into the Twin Inns restaurant back in 1916. It was a real popular stop for people driving down old Route 101. You know, when I think back on it, there's no doubt the land has changed a lot over the years. But when you think back even further to the Luisenio Indians 
and the Spanish conquistadors and those Franciscan padres, well, there have been a lot of people through here since then and a lot of changes. The Indians were here for more than a thousand years before anyone else. And they fished in our lagoons right where Spanish soldiers rested with Portola in 1769. And they joked about the Agua Herianda, the <laughs> stinking waters. They were marching north from San Diego to explore the lands claimed for Spain 200 years before. The trail they blazed became El Camino Real, the road we travel today through the same hills and valleys. Oh, there are other names that date way back. Juan Maria Maron was a prominent San Diegan who claimed over 13,000 acres of land in this area. When the rich mission lands were carved up into ranchos, anyone could draw a rough map showing the boundaries of the land claimed. This rancho was acquired from the Marones in 1860 by a rancher, Francis Hinton. Ten years later, all these lands were inherited by Hinton's partner, Robert Kelly. Now, Kelly was a bachelor, but he had nine nieces and nephews, and they're the ones who finally inherited the rancho, divided among themselves, and then subdivided it as Carlsbad grew. Today, their grandchildren and great-grandchildren live on part of the original rancho. When I see how much things have changed over the years, I just can't help but remember how different it used to be. From the turn of the century right up until after World War II, Carlsbad was just a sleepy little town. Rural, mostly, with lots of agriculture. In the 20s, this area began to develop with the formation of the South Coast Land Company, which replaced Mr. Schutte's company. This new outfit received water rights to the San Luis Rey River, five miles north of here. And then, agriculture really took off. Flower growing became an important business when growers from Los Angeles discovered our plentiful land and water. The first avocado groves were planted in 1916, and many new strains were developed. Avocados were such a big thing around here that we even had an annual Avocado Day Festival back in the 20s. But today, most of those early groves are gone. They were taken out to make way for all the people and houses that you see here now. With all this agricultural activity, we needed workers to harvest the crops. The demand was soon met by Mexican laborers, most of them moving north to seek better opportunities or to escape the revolution going on down there. Carlsbad provided these people with a shelter in a cluster of small wood frame houses, which today has become what we call Barrio Carlos. Many of the original homes have been maintained for generations. Right up until uh, World War II, the Mexican children were taught in a separate class and couldn't even speak Spanish at school. The 30s saw some other changes in these parts. Leo Carrillo, the actor from Hollywood, he brought back the spirit of early California with his flying L.C. Ranch. 
the old hacienda out there, is now preserved as a city park. I guess when you get right down to it, people have always made Carlsbad what it is. Maybe we just got a lot of town spirit from those early avocado days right on up to our city fairs today. <laughs> we have fairs right on the downtown streets. And of course, there's the annual book fair over in Holiday Park. It's sponsored by the Friends of the Library. It's a major event in the life of our town. The fact is, we got a wonderful library with something for everyone. Carlsbad is now a city pointing toward the future. There's a lot of expansion and growth going on. More people, more houses, new businesses, and industry. While there's new jobs, and all of this has changed the quality of life in our town. You know, Carlsbad is a good place to live and have fun. There's good fishing down by the power plant in the surf. And some people enjoy boating, water skiing on the Agua Hedionda Lagoon. Others like to play in our parks. But some of us like it in the winter months, too. Did you ever just stroll along barefoot in the sand when there weren't many other folks around? Or watch the birds, or pick up shells, or just enjoy the crisp salt air? Then there's our three lagoons, each with its own character. Buena Vista at our northern boundary is a state wildlife refuge and a bird watcher's paradise. Agua Hedionda, right in the middle, is the one people really get in and use. And the Batiquitos is a tranquil, undeveloped body of water separating Carlsbad from the communities to the south. Carlsbad is a fine community. It's still growing and taking shape. It's up to all of us, the old timers like me, as well as all the new folks who've arrived, to help give 
direction to these changes. We've got to decide for ourselves the quality of life that we're going to have, and we've got to work together to make Carlsbad a great place to live and bring up our children. the changes and growth have their good and bad sides. Sure, it's a different place now than it was 50 or 60 years ago. That's a part of what's going on in the larger world around us, something we can't control entirely. But beneath all these changes, there are some things that remain, the ocean, Goons, the natural beauty. With a little care, this will be with us always.